should be working. Yes, I see audio on the YouTube. Hello, YouTube. And hello, Instagram. Welcome to... Wow, can you believe it's episode eight, eight. of Sunday Tea Book. Episode eight. I'm running out of fingers, but for now, I can still squeeze it out. Mm. Couple more. Hey, T Kundalini, welcome on Instagram. Hello. Just because it's only our second one with a bit of a fancy setup, you want to check on your phone? Sure, absolutely. Just to make sure we're live on YouTube. Right. Oh, I see Josh said, hey guys, so I guess Maybe we're, I don't need to we check don't need now. to check. <laughs> Thanks for the hey guys, Josh. That was really helpful. Thank you. All right, guys, so welcome to episode eight of Sunday Tea Book. We are coming at you live from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. with a uh, delicious tea. Today we're brewing Teguayan Classic, my favorite tea, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited for that. And today's episode is about kettles Teapot. and ding, 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 teapots. So appropriately, mm -hmm. we chose a little, uh, one of Jen's cutest teapots to brew with today. So uh, for those of you new to Sunday Tea Book, a little quick recap. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take books, articles, and papers that are published in Chinese and very hard to access, um, possibly not translated or possibly uh, the translation is a little bit or a lot confusing. And we go through them live with you. We read the English text if it exists and we translate the document. So before you think that this is almost as much fun as listening to paint dry, hmm, can you listen to paint dry? Anyway, while you ponder that, <laughs> Why this is interesting for you tea lovers out there is because if you get a good piece of tea information, that's, that's fantastic. You get some good information straight up into your brain. But, <laughs> as, but as we go through the translation... I love we're, the sound effects. Right? It's good with the sound effects. What, as we go through it though, so as I've been learning about tea from Jen over the last four or six years, there's been a huge amount of confusion and it exists out there too for you guys on why something is called a certain way or what this means or what that means or how come this is so confusing and you see it mislabeled so often and as we go through the translation you guys are going to get to participate in that you're going to help me sometimes pick the best english word we can for something um, and you're going to see where these confusion points are come from and when you start to see those and as you see a whole bunch of them they start to build this sort of cultural picture so that you can so that you'll have a deeper understanding of why all this stuff is like it is. When we're talking about Chinese tea, right? Thousands mm -hmm. of years old, deep culture, not something you're gonna pick up in five minutes in one article. So that's why I think this is so awesome. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're continuing with my mom's book, uh, Jianli Wu. No, how can I say that? My mom, Jianli Wu's book, China Tea. Mm -hmm. So this uh, book comes with the Chinese and English version, but the English version is not as a uh, very clear for a lot of uh, uh, English oh, native yeah. speakers mm -hmm, so that's, that's right. why we're doing this and uh, this book have a uh, great information for people who just get into tea or even for people who doesn't speak Chinese and uh, has been in tea for a while it's a great chance for us to get Absolutely. some turns and names straightening out and um, and today we're talking about teapot, which is actually a really, really fun topic, topic. A fun topic. And kettles. Don't leave out kettles. Also mm. pretty fun. Yes. So, so as Jen mentioned, the China tea is already translated. So we're going to pop that up on the screen. The way we're going to approach it is I'll pop it up on the screen. So you guys out there in Instagram land, if you want to stick with the program, uh, hop on over to our YouTube channel because we can't do all that fancy stuff on Instagram, but we'll pop up the uh, text right on the screen so you guys could read along. Um, I'm going to read a section and then I'm going to go over my impressions and kind of what I think it's saying. Mm -hmm. And then Jen is going to catch me if I made any errors or if something was just completely missed. We'll cover that. And of course, in the down below in the description, you have a link to our finished translation up on the website. So. Once you're over on the YouTube, for those of you on Instagram, and if you're on um, YouTube and you haven't subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you'll know whenever we go live and publish new content. By the way, there's some coming. And um, <laughs> yeah, and with that said, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys in Instagram land. Hopefully we'll see you over on the YouTube hey, do side. Do you think you can finish a whole play by yourself because you are so good at the role play? And yeah, yeah, probably. Probably I could. <laughs> She's absolutely right. So Instagram, sorry for the wobbly. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> See you guys later. Go grab a cup of tea if that upset your tummy a bit. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, end that. Okay, guys, I'm just going to pop that up onto IGTV so people can see about it. 
I'm going to leave that funny looking mm -hmm. thumbnail. Uh, Sunday tea book. So I'm just going to show you guys again. This is the uh, Taiwan Classic. It looks really dark to a lot of people who are uh, like having Taiwan <coughs> quite a lot. They would not expect some color look so dark like this and the straight rather than rolled pro. This is a classic Taiwan. So it's using the process. Sorry, I'm really steaming up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's using the Taiwan process before the 90s, before they That's roll right. that into the little pearl. There's a rolling process, but just not as intense as mm. the, the little pearl shape, or the ball shape mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan. Hence and the name classic. Uh, yes, that's just the shape difference, but mm -hmm. the most important is the process difference. Oh, yes. So it gives it a mm. little bit, you know, deeper, richer mouthfeel, and I it just disagree with it you. Just it's not a little bit. It's a <laughs> lot richer, a lot deeper. Uh, really transforms the tea. Mm. Um, mm. Cool article in Cha Ren. If you want to find out right. why that happened to Teg Wan Yin, um, why is this classic? Because this is how Teg Wan Yin was made, classically and traditionally for many, many years but then it changed why check out child rent 2019 oh yes and it's not a take one in like a, some you can say uh see sometimes as they take one in charcoal bake and stuff that's not the same thing that's not classic uh, most of the charcoal bake use uh the already made the the qingxiang the green version take one in that you use the charcoal to bake it and that's not a, that's not classic so the process the whole mm. the fermentation uh, sorry the oxidation level, the how to make that uh, provoke this uh, mm. aroma is um, more, uh, what I mean is is uh, much more different than just uh, adding a step in the end. Right, yeah, it's an A to Z process difference, not just a little tweak of the roasting, not just a little tweak yes. here. It actually starts right at the, uh, probably the wither, I'm taking a guess, because mm -hmm. um, those things all affect each other. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. All right, so while you get that rolling, I think I might dive right in. Let's oh, I meant to grab the mouse. I gotta go run for the mouse again. I did it every time. every time. I, guys, every I time even made I made the checklist last week. I talked oh. about a checklist. I made and the checklist. Did? I didn't have time to check the checklist. <laughs> he did. I feel really bad for him because he always like a one hour in advance to get all the stuff set up, the, all the softwares, and uh, T said the whole uh, setup was Phil and. Uh, and you even made a checklist. Yes, yes. Full disclosure, though, the exciting new video that's going to drop soon, I got coerced to watch it right before we started. But that's okay. It was all worth it. It's very good. I, you guys are going to love it. Well, I thought of one hour is sufficient. It's so not. I thought it's you were really, just goofing around it's all your barely, It's barely enough time to get ready for this. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us over to... Oh, there's a... a Brenda is here, too. Yeah, let's check it out. Who's all here? Brand oh yeah, we didn't check the comments. Hey Brandon, oh, welcome. This is like a dark chocolate. Like you smell the dark chocolate, that rich mm, stuff. Very, very nice, very nice. And that, for those of you wondering, that was seven grams in a kettle of I unknown volume. I actually don't know the exact volume of this kettle, so I won't guess. But I did measure out seven grams. So Josh says, oh yeah, he made a joke about the uh, hearing the uh, hearing paint dry if you put them up to 100%. <laughs> And Cindy says, good morning. Good morning to you, Cindy. And uh, we're having a great afternoon here. And Dee's Versified, welcome. Ciao, ciao. Mm -hmm. So here we go. I got the title up. So there's the uh, Sunday tea book. I just got to uh, see if my mouse is working. Maybe it's not. Oh, I know what. Okay, now I'm fully ready, guys. So give, me a, give me one more moment here. You'll see my uh, super lazy brewing style. Yes, she's very excellent actually. She's, she looks so casual, but she is really, um, really adjusts every, to every little detail. And we got a mouse folks, just like that. <laughs> Look at me, I, I get it, I'm is getting that, okay, really lazy. Okay, people okay, out there might be wondering. This is not official, okay? Don't do that and it really? might be damper. Okay, dangerous. that was my question. Just I'm really <laughs> no, okay. I, I see you do that a lot. I now do that sometimes. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm at somebody's place, if I'm do brewing for somebody and I do that, is that considered like sloppy or bad or bad etiquette? Or I guess we shouldn't do that. Okay, right? okay. 
Uh, I think that's a good question because I do that a lot because I feel like I'm just all waiting. Yeah, and it's good to let it all drain. It's helpful yes. for the infusion. Yes, I'm just uh, to. I guess that's why my arm is uh, getting not getting slimmer because I'm so lazy. But but <laughs> first I wouldn't right. do this with other people's teapot. For like sure, I right. It might be dangerous or and a different shape like this serving pot. Can you see that? Here? It yeah, happens like to the, work. It works, but it doesn't work as well as the other ones that I use all mm. the time. Those ones really uh, is very sturdy, and almost every of my teapot can sit there and just drain by itself. I'm about to pull that. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. the ring. How oh, is wow. it? Pretty good. Pretty good. Great structure. Um, I'll just dump it. Yeah. <laughs> so Brandon says, I watch mainly for the tea. But Phil's uh, antics is a bonus. I don't know. Okay, good. Commenting on my antics and uh, how I always get made fun of by the boss. I think actually it's more. Um, it's not made You more enjoy fun. it, right? It's pretty. Yes, fun. it's just really cute to have somebody who. Yeah, I want to keep it fun, but uh, you know the right. content. I think the content's gold too, just like Brandon. So where are we guys? We are in this zone right here. Essential tea sets for uh, beginners there, sort of the second one there. I kind of botched mm -hmm. the uh, highlighting, but that's the zone we're in. It's a pretty big section. You can see page 43 to 57. So it covers all kinds of teaware. And today we're starting with kettles. So I'll have a quick look at the, uh, the kettles. We'll probably come back to this picture a little bit later, yeah. just to show you that. And I'm gonna get started with the reading, all right? Sui Shou Pao Kettle. The vast majority of Gong Fu tea of Gong Fu tea requires boiling water. Thus, the water in water dispenser or the so-called boiling water in the electrical kettle is generally around 80 centigrade. That is not suitable for making tea. Sui Shou Pao Kettle is the most convenient way heating is the most convenient water heating tool commonly used in modern tea making. Uh, I think I'll leave it there. Let's jump out and go to my mm -hmm. notes. Um, so, uh, the first thing is, okay, I, I don't know if, if this jumped out for you guys out there, but the first thing I noticed is the, the choice of word, vast majority. Okay, that means that there is some Gong Fu brewing that doesn't require boiling water. Mm -hmm. Is that just lower temperature? Is that what they mean by that? Yes. Oh, okay. That's boring then. I thought maybe there was a cold fu gong fu bro. Cold brew. There's a cold gong... brew too. Chinese really? cold brew. Yeah. Okay. So isn't that cool, guys? Anyway. That I... uses ice though. Oh. Mm. Okay. Well, that's interesting, right? Who wants to uh, <laughs> have a video about that? Those weird things that aren't that. Those are. I got to tell you, okay. for, for, for me, I don't know about you guys out there, but those weird things that aren't even that quote unquote useful yeah. or not so mainstream are super fun. People well, this seem is to... TV videos. <laughs> so yes. What I mean is how useful could that be? <laughs> no, but the, uh, you have ice gong fu brewing, like traditional, like the history of that, even that would be super interesting. Not too. quite into gong fu, but they use teapot and stuff. It's an old way, like, uh, you know, historically some people does that and uh, it recorded how they enjoy the summer tea with ice cold brew. Mm -hmm. And I was a little surprised that the average kettle was around 80, but I think the message here is pretty clear, right? Uh, we need a kettle that heats the water properly if we're going to mm. get into Gong Fu brewing. Right. Um, it's, uh, I just, uh, if you were, I think the confusion is because of the background. What those uh, mentioned, those uh, big, like, uh, machine is like, uh, you know, like uh, the coffee machine also have hot water, where mm. in offices they have the big uh, filter water the machine. Yeah, that's a good difference. Like, um, I guess you're right. In a lot of Western offices, they have the, the water There's bottle, no and it does, they often have oh, hot right. water, but you're right, yeah, not boiling. No, yeah. And everywhere you go in China, there's a quote unquote boiling water tap yes. in the train station, in the malls, yes. everywhere. It's good enough for travel tea, it's just for, uh, and uh, those machines, a lot of Chinese families would use those. Ah, filter water, uh, right. the big bottle. Filter and heat all in yes, one machine. Yes, but it's not like it's good enough for us regular brewing, but uh, for Kung Fu brewing, it's not enough. So just the background is what we yeah. use is because it's quite different culturally. And we also have the thermos, the giant thermos, like uh, 
uh, if it's about uh, like uh, two liter of water, right. but what we do is we boil the water on the kettle on the stove, then fill it in and save that for mm. later day use. So those also are not as boiling as uh, right. supposed to, be. like you was you saw in uh, Sichuan. Mm. Sichuan, yeah, in the uh, right, they pass you a big thermos, mm. and you just refill that yourself. Mm. What was the city? I uh, cannot remember. Chengdu. Mm, Chengdu. Yeah, we were in a park and we had gong fu right at our table, but they just bring a thermos, which is hot enough. It worked fine. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that's in the background. That's why it's Great. saying it. Oh, and Josh confirmed my suspicion. Oh. Yeah, I love hearing and learning about the weird and offbeat tea traditions and brewing methods. It's just so interesting. And even if it may or may not be practical. Mm. Mm. Cool. Totally agree, Josh. Totally agree. All right, carrying on. Uh, carrying on as I do. <laughs> Okay, functions. Common water heating tools can boil the water to ensure the temperature of water. Types. In ancient times, the main water heating machine for brewing tea is blast furnace, whereas modern kettles are made of stainless steel, iron, pottery, glass that can stand high temperature, etc. The heat source are electromagnetic furnace, induction cooker, alcohol burners, and carbon furnace, etc. Uh, I think that's good. I'll pop out. Yeah. Have a little chat about yeah. that section. So functions. Um, let me back up a little bit. It's pretty literal, I think. Boiling water, stuff, right? Yeah. The function the you could put that two words: boiling water. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pretty straightforward. But the types mm -hmm. is interesting. Okay, you've got a word here that really strikes us as strikes me as funny: blast furnace. Right. This is literally what you would forge iron in or that's what I thought right it's a really funny translation and I think they just mean from fire yeah. that's my guess so it means in ancient times what does that look like I think we can scroll you want to go uh, up and see the kettles yeah see the kettles mm. right like the one on the right side is not quite there yet but you see the decoration part of the star logo here right. like this is a small blast the furnace oh. as you need to suck the oxygen and go through that those mm. are how we boil tea like special tea water. very cool okay so like the chaozhou tea, uh, kettle that also have the bottom mm. one basically like a charcoal furnace yes yes more Just than a, a little, blast furnace right <laughs> right okay that's cool that's what i figured but mm. i just thought it's a cute a cute little catch right a cute little mm. word so what else um Okay, there's a little bit, I think most people can figure out electrothermal mm -hmm. um, is basically an electric kettle. So a, an element, like put your stain, we, like for our cast iron, we put it on an electric burner mm. and it heats it up. Uh, induction cookers, we love those, right? Super mm -hmm. fast for boiling water. Mm -hmm. Alcohol burners surprise me. I think I've seen your mom use one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like a, So that's like a, sort of like a charcoal one, but a sterno. Like we call those sterno, it's just yes, a little jelly. Just, uh, you catch yes. the jelly on fire That's and right. it burns and it boils. Well, it will stay safer. Much safer like for you don't indoor have, use, right? Because yeah, less yeah. carbon monoxide. Right. Mm. And then you have charcoal. And then we have carbon, aka charcoal, which is a little riskier yeah. inside. You don't want to do that, folks. Yeah. Um, can we talk about that? We had a little research. <laughs> so I want to talk about right, that. Right, um, right. I was going to say. But, well, we were looking, so we've been talking about, and I think we've done a couple lives with our charcoal kettle, mm -hmm. right? But then you looked up olive pit charcoal? Yes, so the name is called olive charcoal, and it looks like olive. So I, I've i never looked really into that because I never just, uh, like, I mean, for me, charcoal is just to boil. There's good quality charcoal, lasts longer, mm -hmm. hotter, that's it. So I didn't think too much. I thought it was just charcoal somehow made into olive shades. Mm -hmm. So called olive charcoal, but it's not. It's actually charcoal made with olive pit. Mm -hmm. And it's- Right, do that if you're surprised, right? I'm like, <laughs> what? Right, and they have a- I Couldn't believe walnut that. Walnut too. Walnut pit? Not the pit, the outside, the oh, shell. Oh, walnut shell. Mm. Mm. So they make those- uh, the Must be very dense. That must be why. Like the wood fibers must be super right. dense or something. Yes, and the it's much hotter than mm. regular charcoal and cleaner and cleaner. So it's okay. because it's a special kind of a teaware 
uh, tea accessory kind of stuff is a four tea boil, so it has to kind of consider indoor. Mm. So it's indoor safe Supposedly. because how it boil, uh, how it starts, and uh, it's just yeah. a, a surprise me. I didn't know so, Olive could make it yeah. into and charcoal. I th- and I think on one of our other outdoor videos, somebody asked us, "Do you use blah 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 charcoal?" And I don't know if it was Olive Pit or some different mm. word they used. But anyway, I think he was saying all of them. Maybe, yeah. Well, we don't, and we. Th- I remember at that time I thought it's the shape of the charcoal. Maybe it's just smaller so that it right. can fit there. But anyway, mm. this is an actual thing, mm. and um, now we're curious. I think we might have to get some. Yes. yes. And apparently, it's pretty good in the sense that it lasts uh, like really lasts long. Lasts a long time We've with been, a small amount. So we just went pretty, you know, pretty pedestrian like we want to get brewing right so we have briquettes for our barbecue briquette you know for our barbecue we just use those we put about four or five of those in that's all that can fit and they work great and uh, we're outside so it's not a big deal mm. and they actually help keep the bugs down they're a little bit smoky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little, when bit, they started, it a little like, bit smoky when they started yeah. it's perfect it keeps the bugs away <laughs> all right we'll check on questions here mm-hmm. and uh so Blast furnace, oh my god, blast furnace slash crucible is hot enough to melt a metal teapot if you put one in on top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, just uh, just wondering, what's a sui shao pao? Mm, good question. I glossed right yeah. over that Chinese, the sort of pinion intro to the whole section. Yeah. Sui shao pao kettle. I was going to mention that in the end, why this oh. name. Is uh, if you say sui shou pao kettle, it's pretty specific. Like uh, if the uh, if somebody is not a tea person, they wouldn't know what you're saying. Mm. If somebody uh, is a little bit uh, 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 tea savvy, tea savvy, they heard of it or uh, know it. So uh, it means it has the you know, uh, like a connotation that is very convenient. And uh, sui shou pao usually all looks like oh scroll teas. up yeah. Right, yeah, they've got Mostly the... Mostly look like the left and the middle one. Right. This kind of a shape. The, the, spout, the spout is really it. handy for pouring gong fu. Yes. It's not like, the you know, the Western ones that stand up and yes. have that really awkward pouring yes. spout. Mm. The spout is easy for pouring and... Uh, the oh, y- they more? can't see that. Huh? Oh, oh, right, right. There yeah. we go, guys. So we're talking about the spouts here. Like, these are convenient for gong fu brewing. Right. So it's easy pouring, not too splashy. And also the um, most of them have the very handy setting, which is if the water is low, like the water volume is mm. low, it stop boils. If right. the water temperature is low at a certain point, I don't know lower than any temperature. Just at a certain it point, it clicks back mm. on to mm. another boil. Right. So that's the two basic uh, from functions of a sui shou pao. But if you say kettle and boiled teas, everybody understands. You don't yeah. have to emphasize on sui shou gotcha. pao. And for my money, mm-hmm. okay, okay, I gotta talk about the, uh, I gotta talk about the tea region too. Because uh, for my money, so we, we have a video about how to choose a kettle or a kettle mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, so I'll put a link to that down below. And we talk about um, a lot of we talk about the spouts and you know some of the fancy ones have very narrow spouts notice that the ones we showed you here uh the ones we just showed you didn't have a super narrow spout i want to show it again because it's kind of worth emphasizing they got a proper spout because sometimes you want a good flow sometimes mm. you want a little flow you just tilt that less and you mm. control the flow but for my money it's way better to have this basic on off boil or mm-hmm. don't boil and keep me warm and turn off mm-hmm. than to have a million temperature settings on a kettle mm. these ones rock the gong fu scene all right yeah. so but sometimes here is the thing sometimes they have more temperature now in uh, china is it, mm. but you see everybody just put that on a hundred i hate that don't, 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 just press mm. like hell because it, it, it basically it basically made it harder to yeah. get it turned but on. there's the fancy fancy function that i love is if the bro- water yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. it automatically refills water so that, that's genius. yeah yeah at the tea at the tea the, pl- the tea producers all often have these they've got a really nice tea table and on the side they've got this kettle almost the size of the tea table like the size of this tea table here so it has the burner and it has a little tap and when the water is gone instead of just turning off 
it goes bzzz, and through a little hole fill that back up yeah turn back on. and now there's the even invisible ones that uh, you put your kettle there they refill you're that. kidding yes you don't because the old ones have a hole so like on top and drop down mm -hmm. right no i know the new now ones they've got a valve in the bottom something like that I yo I really got, fancy i gotta have one of these it's one of my dreams but they're pretty big so when we're over there i always look at them and i'm like can we fit this in our luggage can we fit it <laughs> and um so far no but you yeah. can be sure the day i get one back here we're doing a video okay <laughs> i promise you that guys i promise you that next section okay enough chit chat let's rock and roll all right tight oh, we didn't finish the the comments, the comments. okay yeah, let me go jump. back to us sir we got to finish the comments you're right i'm a little bit zigzag well i'm so excited about that tea table now i really want one again <laughs> i forgot how much i wanted one of those uh, eventually our brewing will be hands-free i don't even pour that right. you don't pour the water Right. It just go directly into our tummy. Right. All right. So where were we? Um, uh, also, Shui Pao, we covered that. So, uh, Hecha Holiday. Hey, welcome, Hecha Holiday. Oh, I've seen that before. Okay. I think that was the all, in reference to all of charcoal. Mm -hmm. And Josh said, yeah, I've heard uh, of two fancy kinds of Chinese charcoal, uh, olive pit and also walnut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Brandon says, wish I had an outdoor space so I can use charcoal kettle someday hopefully mm, Brandon park right mm. you could just go to a park we sometimes grab our our kettle and go to a park too mm -hmm. but anyway and with I the totally travel set is really easy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's a little yes with the travel set it's easy and so uh, Josh says also Japanese uh, what is that binchotan charcoal which is like some kind of thin solid wood charcoal. I use Bintotan to add minerals to my water. Oh, cool. Mm. H.O. Holiday says, I have a junk plastic kettle, had a metal one, but I think it got lost or I left it at one of my old apartments. Oh, that's, that's a bummer. Um, we have like a ton of Western kettles, right? Because if when we travel, we used to, we pick them up and then we end up carting them home and keep them. We're like, oh, we might need it someday. So they're all in the basement piled up. Um, with those and they're tricky to pour but when we get to hotels the thing is hotels used to have kettles now they don't and they just have those gross coffee machines and the water yeah. is too awful so we always rush out and buy a kettle yeah anyway there are a lot of claims by certain more let's say story-based practitioner sellers of going through stuff that claim different charcoals make your water taste different but usually to justify price yeah i have to say that I'm not sure the charcoal changes the water, but I am pretty certain the clay teapot, the clay kettle does. They do say that. Uh, we read well, that in the, the description uh, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm. Say it. The product what? description of the charcoal. We're skeptical yeah. too, Josh. We're a little bit like, well. I mean, I really, I mean, you really need to sit down and uh, really taste them side by side. The, the, yeah even say there is a difference how big would that mm. be a difference between black tea and green tea uh, uh no 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 yeah, yeah. you know and uh, especially honestly, after infusion like if you taste just the water you might be like oh yeah there's a little difference but once you infuse the tea yeah. mm. and i think the the play of the clay in the water has more effect on the tea because there's yeah. more mouthfeely stuff and aroma stuff going on there yeah. And you know, this like uh, except the working time, like when I have, which is most of the time when I have tea, I'm practical. I'm having tea mm. is because I'm thirsty. I want to have tea and stuff. I wouldn't be really, mm. really keen on the mm -hmm. nuance and stuff. Like, yeah. So subtle, right? I mean, just a it's subtle change in your brewing is going to change something yeah. way more than that water change, yes, right? Yes. Yes. So. Um, and H. A. Holiday says, need to look for a new metal kettle, just a single temp with a decent spout. Yeah. Mm. Surprisingly hard to find, right? We get comments. Can I just show them this since we're in this yeah. section? We get questions a lot about, hey, where can I buy this kettle? Mm -hmm. And we don't know. We brought it over from China. But yes. that, that kind of convenient, that's Sui Shou Pao, right? It is a really cheap. Yeah, they're really inexpensive in China, but all no of them offense, are, but I really don't get it. And there's uh, those expensive kettles with uh, oh, yeah. simple boil and stuff, and over a hundred dollars. That's uh, crazy, really I crazy. But anyway, good luck. So I hope you do find one. Mm. Um, we've, we've. I think uh, I know the brand. The uh, Carney bought a new one, something like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 
check out uh, go well. check out Tea and Spoons. Maybe uh, mm. shoot her a note through her blog. It's Tea and Spoons, H.A. Holiday. She might be able to turn you on to where to find a good mm. one. Okay, just if we can help, we can help. Right? Um, Josh says, so true. I want one of those auto fillers so bad. Oh, tell me about it. I have like a pressure pump carafe uh, for bad coffee and buffets that kind of works to keep behind my kettle. Mm. Yeah, we have one of those for tea festivals. Remember, we just press it and the water comes shooting mm. up. Mm. But uh, right on. So then H. Holiday says, I just walked downstairs to my sink to refill. Yes, yes. That's pretty much what we do too. Yeah. Fire is fire. Only temperature is different. Mm. Yeah, and then Josh says, so in reference to do the charcoals make the water better, Josh says, yeah, I've seen a lot of Chinese ads since I follow a lot of tea people on Insta that claim huge difference in water flavor from charcoal. Mm. And maybe it's something we'll look into. We've got a lot of water videos in the queue, so I don't know if we can, it'll take us a while to get to different charcoals, especially since I don't think many people are brewing that way. Mm. Uh, can add clay taste minerally like yeast and teapot might. Mm. Yeah. Is that electric? Yes, the one I showed you is an yes. electric and it turns off when it's empty. It doesn't refill itself. Wah. Um, <laughs> but it does, um, if it's full, it'll keep temperature. Yeah, um, it's quite basic. It's yeah, function. very, very handy. I, that's all I would want, actually, except for the automatic yes. water. Add. And, and I like it's light, I think. Hmm. <laughs> this is a trend, and not just the, the, the like to make everything heavy. I, hmm. I don't like, I feel like it's just why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a cast iron one that's brutally heavy, but it, the difference is like this one when it's on the burner, it keeps temperature. So as mm. a stainless kettle, that's fine. But if it's coming off of the burner for any amount of time, they lose heat really fast. Right, whereas right. But the, the cast size iron matters. one, I like this yes. size because you are comparing mm. to the red one, the, the screaming uh, teapot we have. No, that one, no, that one loses temperature super fast. Yeah, because it's big and with how and much aluminum. water. Oh, even even right. faster at shedding heat and it has a big flat surface so it loses right. heat faster but the smaller body like the volume yep. keep that is slightly better that's right way, that's so. right yeah mm -hmm. i was talking about the cast iron one which keeps that really warm mm -hmm. for quite a while even right. though it's off the burner right and um is that electric yes and josh says and gee is the prices they try to charge with those physic those physically irresponsible charcoal water taste injection yeah yeah crazy charcoal for me is more about fun yeah yeah for us it's just about being able to brew outside where there's yeah. less electricity yeah um, uh, and playing with a little fire -ish oh yeah hey <laughs> holiday has friends in china she mm. can totally get it but that's a there. like a 220 so you need a yeah we have a little yeah. adapter and it's, it and it's really boil. slow it takes four times longer to boil because of that <laughs> no seriously it does yeah. it's really slow mm. but it's worth it all right, I'm gonna move on, okay? There's mm -hmm. some more comments. They're streaming in like crazy, which mm -hmm. is great. Keep it up, guys. We're gonna come back to them. We won't miss any comments, but mm -hmm. we're gonna go back to da -da -da, the book. So we're on to selections, still under kettle. Mm. Okay, so selections. In general, it is common to use stainless steel pot with electrothermal furnace and induction cooker, whereas the combination of glass pot or pottery and alcohol pottery and iron pots, iron pots with induction cooker can be used. Whew. Usage, one. Before the new pots, especially for pottery and iron pots being used firstly, it should be boiled with water and immersed longer time to remove the odor of a new pot. Two, while it is not convenient to boil water outside, try to use the charcoal and pottery or iron pots instead. Okay, so, um, selections um, a little bit confusing like I think I know what's being said in the selections section here but mm -hmm. I have to say it's a little bit jumbled right we've got a stainless steel pot with an electric burner or induction mm -hmm. um, but also glass pottery alcohol and iron um, and charcoal with can be used within I don't know it's just Different different styles, right? I think. That, I think that this is a not to suggest uh, us how to choose and match them. It's uh, more mm. intro introducing what would you What's usually okay. see right. in the market, okay. you know. Which is basically metal, glass, pottery, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. uh, with we kind of covered right with charcoal, electric induction, yeah. and um, yeah, uh, alcohol or gas. Yeah. 
Mm, it's funny, we, they didn't mention gas. We sometimes use a little like uh, gas, like uh, liquid gas canister burner with a kettle. Oh, right, right, right. Not very gong fu though, that's the screaming yeah. whistling kettle that you, that you uh, that, absolutely hate. Yeah. <laughs> so usage here, it has a little seasoning tip, right? In step one, it seems to be talking about when you have a new pot, mm -hmm. right? You have a new pot, especially pottery and iron, which mm -hmm. Give them a season and it gives you some recommendation it seemed like you basically boil some water in it and uh it sounds like you might have to put the whole pot in the water after but i'm not sure if that's what they're trying to say there because immersed longer time does it just mean leave the water in it or put the whole thing underwater leave the water in ah. it i didn't catch that yeah because immersed is confusing in this oh, context oh I, I know what you're saying and if you're a little bit knowledgeable about uh, yeasting hmm. pot where you do immerse them right, right. it can be you'd be like oh I didn't know you do that with the right. kettle too so guys you don't need to immerse the kettle right. it just leave this it is, in mm, yeah more like a, how you buy something from a store you yeah, probably give, always use that you give it a clean right? yeah you give don't, that to clean yeah. especially pottery ones they might have the <laughs> dirt or earthy Clay dust, flavor right? yeah mm, mm. Those, uh, sometimes it has those flavors it, it picks up Yep. And then it's this second part is pretty good. Uh, if you're going outdoors, try some charcoal mm. with the iron or pottery. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, let's head back and check the comments again because they were streaming in pretty quick. So we'll see what's going on over here. There we go. Brandon, I think we left off at Brandon. Mm. Brandon says, I have a metal electric kettle that works great, but the spout could be better. It's still going strong after six years. See, that's a big thing for me too. I yeah. want, the kettle has to last like, I mean, really, there's no reason for a kettle to ever fail. Right. Um, unless you drop it from a really high place. Huh. How would that happen? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, going strong after six How years, <laughs> not buying a new one until this one breaks, which could be a while apparently yeah perfect right it, it works i think that's the perfect attitude like if it work if it works and it ain't broke don't fix it mm. right um and then josh says there's something visceral about uh nature fire water and air all working together to make your tea it's it's uh, quite cool yeah mm. i really like uh charcoal brewing too and it also i've mentioned this before though the rhythm is nice Mm. When you have electricity, you have this um, ability to boil water like that, which is um, f nice and convenient if you need a quick cup of tea. But when we, we go outdoors in the summer, we brew all day with charcoal and it mm. establishes its own rhythm. The water just doesn't boil. And you know, fast. if you're uh, super like picky about tea and stuff, the speed of the boiling tea matters. The speed of boiling the water matters. The water, right? yeah, boiling yeah. the water matters. We don't mm. like the water that takes 40 minutes to boil. Or something, or, or five minutes is or one too minute, fast. Right? Yeah, like yeah. A, there is the switch There's a rate at which you want to put energy into the yes. water that's optimum. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of the flavor difference that could, too. Yes, right, absolutely. because it does boil at a uh, really. That's why we like those um, olive uh, pit stuff because they boil. They generate that. enough heat to be quick enough, yes. but not too fast. Yes. Ah, very interesting. Um, we definitely got to try that. Mm. I personally, so Josh continues, I personally have a Bonavita 1.7 temperature variable gooseneck and it's my favorite Gong Fu accessory I have ever bought. Having, uh, having one degree temperature control for delicatees is amazing. Mm. Mm, right, right. Also, I watched your video about gooseneck kettle and some definitely do that, but Bonavita has a much higher quality slash wider gooseneck allows for intense control of stream and I've done a da 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 done a bunch of experiments on temperature with this kettle temp having the neck is the same temp as main body from 80 to 100 i didn't test below 80 though yeah i think if why bother if it's that good from 80 to 100 i think you're solid mm -hmm. and that's a great test mm -hmm. i'm glad i'm glad there's other tea nerds out there doing those things yes, it's fun yes. like you do it once and you, you kind of have that in your pocket for for a while right mm -hmm. um and H. A. Holiday says, I don't immerse yeasting, too worried about it cracking. I just use water from my kettle. Oh, pouring over, pouring over probably she means. When she sees in that, she doesn't put it in a pot. I oh. think you, uh, we have a video about that. I'll put the link down below and I'm sure you've already seen it. But for those of you who um, 
do want to season it, a good trick is just put a tea towel under. I think that's what we, you did in the video. Right? Yeah. Put a yeah. tea towel on the bottom of the pan. Put the yeasting on the tea towel. And also, maybe don't boil the hell out of it, right? Mm. You don't want that in a raging boil throwing your teapot all around. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, right? Absolutely. So I'll put the link down below. There's all there's kind of details about that. But, you know, pouring water over it, that works. It's all about whatever works for you, right? And I totally get you don't want to break a yeasting teapot. It makes total sense. How's the heat up there? I see a fan. Yes, she's a big fan. <laughs> no, it's uh, just the room with the computer. The temperature's dropping. All uh, right, it's getting cool. We're a little bit, it's becoming... It's just my face is too flat. <laughs> autumnal. It's becoming autumnal. You know, my there. glasses sit on top of that. Mm. So when I have a little bit of heat, I will, uh, I will just fog up. Mm. That's why this is what I'm focusing on. Right, she's just defogging her glasses. And my kettles and stuff is just here it, boring. Yeah, it all warms up the room. We, we crank the AC down a bit for mm. these videos. We've got, of course, the computer streaming, so everything gets so hot. And the tea is hot, which also warms us up. Yes. And is delicious. Yes. The uh, classic nature, like the real, the um, proper oxidation, proper roast, really bring out those uh, yeah. orchid tones. If not the the life and stuff, usually I love the sweat from the tea. Like they mm. really give me that relaxing mm. feeling mm. with the sweat out. Yeah, we don't talk about or advocate uh, like detox or tea detox certainly it's not something we're into but in terms of just a healthy habit mm. uh, i think you've hit something right a little bit of a sweat is a really healthy exercise and tea can really help with yeah that. you know have a tank and see the sweat just dripping is like mm -hmm. satisfying mm -hmm. see how much you can drip Are you <laughs> oh boy that was a nice image <laughs> anyway this is really good mm -hmm. We're on like third or fourth infusion, and it's got a great. Mm, I just love how feel. lingering too. Mm. Like uh, when I uh, breathe out through my nose, and uh, long after the sip, I still have that uh, creamy floral, that not overly sweet, a very mm. refreshing floral scent. Yes, that's so true about right? this tea. It's not overly sweet kind yes. of floral. Uh, absolutely, I often. It pushes more into the sort of, I don't know if roasty floral is a thing, but it has that. For me, I often miss the floral element because mm. it's so subtle uh, and so and not And it's not sweet. At all uh, like uh, overwhelmed. It's like not in your uh, face, yeah. Like for one then no, sometimes it could be too mm. floral, especially in hot days, I, I tend mm. to get away. Totally, totally agree. So that's how the heat is up here. Mm. It's uh, it's actually outside is getting uh, cool. We're hoping we have ten degree at night, uh, like two mm. days ago. Yeah, ten degrees C. Mm. So yeah, we're way up north. Um, Cindy says, Brandon, I'm worried that your kettle has lasted six years. My husband bought one last year, and I don't care for the spout, and waiting waiting for it to die before buying a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna wait for a while. She doesn't want to wait six years. I, I suggest sabotage, Cindy. Just uh, drop it from a high place like I suggested. <laughs> Nobody needs to know how that may have happened. It uh, can be an accident. Um, and it, you know, and you can set yourself up with a new kettle that way. Right? I'm helpful, I think. I'm pretty <laughs> Full of bad ideas. Just don't let him watch our channel. He might know what happened then. All right. And Heisha Holiday says, I use boiling water and fast times for delicious tea. Yes. Yes. We love boiling water. I have a $17 plastic kettle and it's lasted about six years. Yeah, they last forever too. I always say it's, say it, but Liu uh, Liubao on a hot humid day. Mm, love it. So good on a hot humid day. Mm. And Brandon says, Cindy, haha, I've been tempted to just get a new one, but I also feel bad about just getting rid of something that works perfectly fine. Yeah, hey, I feel that old. Kijiji, buddy. Sell it on Kijiji, five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Two bucks maybe for a kettle. The kettle but, <laughs> right? hard to sell. Free to a good home. At least you'll know it's not wasted. Uh, so Cindy likes the sabotage idea. So <laughs> keep us posted how that goes. Okay, I'm curious. And it doesn't have to be a drop. It could be a could be a short circuit. Just be safe. <laughs> All right, let's head over back to to the reading here. We'll go on to the next section. You guys should be super. I've been kind of teasing you about this I'm gonna go to uh, book only so we're out of the way and we're into teapots guys we're into teapots oh we didn't show all the kettle types I have 
Okay, coming back to show you kettles, just because we're moving on the teapots. So I want to show off. We showed you uh, the metal one, but we also got a, brought a glass one here just to show you that. So we've got a... Uh, I didn't know. This is his plan. I have no idea. So I was like, why is my section crowded with those things we're not using today? Right? It's only a video about kettles, and there's a bunch of kettles sitting right there. But anyway, I guess I should have given her a more careful debrief. Um, anyway, so class one, you've seen us use this for the boiling, um, boiling Fujuan video, boiling right. aged white tea, um, really awesome for that. And it's got a little filter built into the spout too, mm -hmm. which will strain the leaves as you uh, right. pour. Just then, wanted to say because uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because how <laughs> how uh, where tea people kind of feel like uh, all the glasses are tempered. I never think of a glass with a crack mm -hmm. when it's hot, but. Reality is there are still glass that cracks and stuff. Mm. This one we put that directly on the, the burner. Uh, burner and stuff is fine, but just make sure if you find something in a, it's tempered. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. A, like a sink. Yeah, and full disclosure, I don't even turn the burner on full blast with this. I put it on like uh, sixty-six percent. It boils plenty fast, so I feel like it mm. doesn't need more. It can probably take it. I just feel like I don't want it. I'm mm. still. I'm not, I don't know why I'm always nervous with glass. Right. When we first got here, she was pouring hot water into our regular kitchen tumblers. Yeah, and then he freaks and out, and I was like, because, "What?" Uh, the bottoms are really thick, and they're definitely not tempered. So eventually, they will crack. But um, so far, so good. So just keep that in mind when you're. Well, honestly, as a Chinese, I feel like all the glass are tempered. Yeah, and we've been talking about the charcoal, the charcoal kettle. So here it is. You can tell it gets lots of good use. I gave it a little clean, but the bottom is completely black. And it has this nice patina up the side right? where, where it gets sort of back to its normal color. I think that's just super pretty. And when Josh was talking about the visceral nature of fire, water, tea, and mm. air all outdoors and the steam, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of it. The, seeing the kettle turn black when we bought it, it was new. It just came like this over time. And it is really, I don't know, I just love it. Um, we haven't used it in a while. We went crazy when we finally got the warm weather, but we'll have to get mm. back out there and get brewing with the charcoal again yes and I think that's it we showed you the stainless one so I'll get on with that back to uh, back to the tea book and back to tea on to teapots so super excited about teapots mm -hmm. so teapots are the most important and illustrious among the tea sets pots can be called the king of tea sets I don't know why I made the hand gesture I'm not on screen anyway <laughs> functions teapots are the main containers to brew tea types the types of tea sets are sandfire pots, porcelain pots, glass pots, etc. All right, and I think we'll stop there. Uh, I'm going to bring us back into the picture and mm -hmm. just scroll down a bit so people can see the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so notes. Okay, I, I don't know if everybody will agree, but I have to say that I agree. King of the brewing vessels, right? Just look at this little cutie. I mean, how can this not be a king? These things are just delightful. Um, nothing, but anyway, under there, in terms of translation, I think it's pretty clear. These are sort of going through heaven. Yeah. And, yeah. and caution to you guys out there who are new, probably you guys all know this, but if you're new, these are very addictive. Okay, teapots are very addictive. We have, an, a, we have somebody in recovery, if, uh, in a limited level of successful recovery, right beside us here. I just cannot walk in a store. <laughs> yes, you know, when yes. I'm at home, I'm okay. Yes, Not that's true. Actually, and in the even in North America, we're never really super yeah. shopping. But yeah. when we when we head back to China and go into those tea accessory shops, yeah, and, we'll, and it's fun stuff. So the next spot is the function, right? Is simple brew tea. So I think again, pretty straightforward. It can be two words: brew tea. Mm -hmm. And the types we've got a uh, sand fired, uh, which is um, easy in play. Yeah, right here. Right, Zusha teapot, mm -hmm. uh, porcelain, which I don't have a sample for you, and uh, glass, uh, mm -hmm. same thing. We have a bunch of Zusha, but we don't have any we have porcelain. have a little one, a little, somewhere. A little porcelain one? Anyway, mm -hmm. I didn't find it. But you can see the difference, right? Um, and we're going to get into that in a, in a, in a moment. My thought is uh, let's uh, continue and then look back to talk about this the picture. picture. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Okay, so I'm gonna guys, you're gonna see a really cool picture. Okay, take a look. Bingo. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll come back to it in a minute. All right, <laughs> don't panic. 
Uh, so selections, okay, we'll carry on and we'll come back to the picture. Selections, the basic requirements of a good teapot is that water spouted smoothly, quickly stopping and no splashing. Lid and the body should be faying closely. The entrance of the pot should be at the same level with the spout. The pot itself should be shallow instead of deep. The lid should be tight instead of loose. No earthy taste or foreign flavor. Be able to adapt to rapid changes of temperature with no leakage and not easy to be broken. The quality can infuse different types of tea and give play to the characteristic of tea. Easy to put in tea and getting enough water capacity. The temperature can be kept after brewing, not being diffused too fast. Be able to leach all the ingredients within a short time. Okay, I think that's good. We'll stop with uh, selection there and we'll go back and chat about it. I'm just getting that lined up. So the first paragraph, we'll go para by para here. Um, pretty straight up, the first paragraph is pretty clear, right? Smooth pour um, with a quick stop and don't splash, okay? Um, always one of the first things you're gonna look for. Para two had a really interesting word that I actually had to go to the dictionary for, faying. This is a fancy word and it's not used improperly. I think it's pretty accurate. And it, it's, it's the, where the uh, surfaces join, i.e. like in this guy, where the lid joins the pot. Have a good faying. I've never, it's used in welding, I think, more, uh, where you would actually join them in a weld, but it means, I think it basically is a fancy way to say tight seal. Um, so wherever there's a, where the lid goes on, it's close and tight. Um, but oh, I, that sounds pretty good. Why is that a misuse? It's. I said it's not. I think oh, they oh. didn't. They, it's not a okay. misused word or misplaced. Right. It seems perfect. The only bad thing about it is I don't think it's a very common word, and I had wow. no idea what it meant. Um, so I think it just means a nice tight seal, which of course we mm -hmm. want. And um, yeah, shallow versus deep. Uh, I had it. It's pretty clear. Other than that, the the whole uh, paragraph is very clear. Mm -hmm. But when I saw shallow versus deep, I thought of our. Shupuar pot, so tall. Is it a bad <laughs> pot? No, I think the wording it says it should be. It's not uh, the uh, Chinese word is not should be. It's uh, it's a better prefer this, not to say right. not. Same with what they said about the spout and the uh, leaf uh, entering. Mm. Like uh, this is the opening, right? Yes. And uh, the spout uh, on the same level. Mm. That's the general rule, the kind of yes. the basic rule to make sure it pours well. Right. But nowadays you could see different shades. Sure. A bit lower is okay, a bit higher is a bit of a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a tons of different shapes there. Right, right. Right. And this is again this selection that like, uh, the the audience is talking to are people who are thinking about getting mm. a teapot, not uh, who are collecting. So yes, the that's very a good basic point. thing are easy to access easy to brew because right? the teapot itself just the easing teapot itself is a whole lot of books right so you cannot just cover that in four points oh yeah yeah that's so a really these good point are really like our uh easing teapot videos those are for people who are just getting it yes. not for collectors and stuff right right so they're very practical tips yeah. um really get, get you started brewing and get you with something of reasonable quality to get yes. you off the ground right yes. right okay and um, so the next paragraph, para three, no, no earthy taste, no foreign flavor. Kind of obvious, you don't want your teapot to be doing a whole bunch of funky stuff to the flavor. Mm. Not to be mistaken, and they even call out um, in a couple paragraphs, there, it's, there, that's different than um, giving some good characteristics. Adding character to the tea is different than messing with the flavor, right? This is earthy, you know, dirt. You don't want to taste dirt, right? Mm. Um, so that paragraph, uh, I think these were all pretty good. Um, paragraph five was interesting. Um, so adapt to rapid changes. I think that's pretty straight up too, right? It's basically, I think more for glass again, because yeah. using clay is fired in what, a, like 3,000, 4,000 degree furnace, not gonna break. Anyway, way more than boiling water, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not gonna break. Uh, but more for the glass, because this isn't even just covering yeasting, right? It's covering ceramic teapots and glass teapots too. Now this one says the quality can infuse different types of tea. So that got me a little bit confused, because I know with ceramic and glass, for sure, you can have different types of tea. And I mean, if you really want your yeasting to be an all-purpose pot, 
by all means go ahead, but traditionally we usually put yeasting with a given T or a T type kind of, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's talking about that here at all. It's uh, basically to say the material can match the, the, the T types. Oh, and like uh, we saw in the previous section was covered yes. in depth, right? So yes. ah, very good, very yeah. good. Um, so go back and check our video about, I think two episodes ago we talk about uh, uh, the basics of T-wear without getting into yeah, the deep. Oh, last just last week, week we covered yeah. T-wear in general and they match different, um, you know, porcelain is good for this, yeasting is good for that. It's mm -hmm. all covered in that uh, mm -hmm. section. So, okay, that makes more sense now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is covered in our how to choose a yeasting teapot video. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that I honestly, if I'm in the shop, very easy to forget about. And that is the easy to get the tea in and out. Mm -hmm. So if you're, oh, sorry, you're infusing. So if you're buying a rock oh, tea, a pot for rock tea, and okay. it's got a tiny little opening like that, you're going to have a lot of difficulty getting the leaf in and out. So yeah. don't, tr don't forget that aspect when you're choosing a pot. Um, really good point. Mm -hmm. And um, let me see if there was any notes there at all. Mm -hmm. mm. The enough water too, like you got to consider the tea, the, is the tea is going to take up some volume. So it mm -hmm. has to leave enough volume of water to do a good infusion too. Yes. So another one of those subtle details that when you're in a shop and looking at the little teapot, you can fall in love without thinking about all. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, just like a girlfriend, sorry for the metaphor. But you know what I mean? When you're in the romance period, you forget about all the practical yes. details. Yes. Then you go home and find out, oh my God, she cannot cook. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hold enough water to brew the tea. That's your primary Right? Standard. And there's no problem. She's an amazing cook, so I got a really great one here. <laughs> so that's a, that's a metaphor, right? I think that's an apt metaphor for teapot. It's something yeah, yeah. so precious and so Absolutely. dear. You want to have a solid foundation for an ongoing yes. relationship for many, many years. I just want to jump in on what you're saying. It's a good point. Here is the thing. It is a, for a teapot is supposedly supposedly to be a brewing vessel just like how we evaluate a guy one and stuff mm. it's the uh, our point is always the practical first mm. Mm. how is the build is that uh, fluid and stuff and uh, then when people go to collector level talk about uh, the clay difference talk about other differences but i found a lot of time because when people are uh, you know, not just marketing, but HP, we're talking about teapot always elevated to a certain level of tastings and this and that. Mm -hmm. and really, a lot of people feel like I need to choose the right clay. The, how do I choose right. the good clay? Those mm -hmm. are very advanced topics mm -hmm. and not necessarily, uh, and a lot of times uh, causing the ne people to neglect the really basic of uh, the shapes. Right. The, the really yep. basic, are this uh, shape good for the tea I wanted to put? Right. Or is this pouring well? Some are dripping, like uh, when you stop pour and stop the drip, like uh, those are basic like uh, yes. uh, making right. issues, right? Mm. So I think, uh, so I feel like uh, those are basic things we need to emphasize to say before you could jump into clay mm. and detail nuance and yes waters and how that affects and stuff put some attention to a basic a good teapot yeah yep. on the other hand i found a lot of people if they want something basic they're not get going to get into teapot mm. when they are buying a teapot they want something fancy up that's why they're uh you know more looking at clays right and like a, we just mentioned because you were talking about how that affecting the taste of the tea mm. it's actually that kind of a way of saying is at some point the wrong mm. is it, it shouldn't affect the taste right. uh, uh, sorry shouldn't have the play in the taste of this tea mm. is to bring out the best of this tea right. not to affect that in a way that the right. clay has some play in the taste that's right Give and play to the characteristic, right? Is kind of what yes. they're saying, right? That it enhance the tea. Yeah, it's the mm. tea itself. And why this is, uh, how should I say, like why the perp, the zashia the is so valuable is because when it's, it's like a plain paper, you want a white paper to start drawing. Mm. But the good thing with this is if I, I brew the teguan in this pot for ages later on, if I just put hot water in it, like a, 
plain hot water in it and pour it out, it will have that uh, tea guanyin hint in it. Mm. It absorbing that stuff. Mm. It goes mm. with the tea, not just the teapot itself or right. the clay itself. It's both directions. Yes, mm. affecting or making the tea uh, have other tasting profiles and right. that, like right. especially flavors, elements, mm. it shouldn't yeah. be there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just as a nuance effect, and uh, also I don't know if I said that to, like clearly. But I think it's pretty clear. It's uh, not a major player, it, but it's and also that's kind of why we pick a tea type or a tea mm. to brew in the pot. Like this one's just Taiwanian. Is it just classic? Taiwanian. So this one's good. For, is we use for Taiwanian, and you kind of have some leverage, right? You can say, oh. If you want to pick a pot for oolong, you could do that, right? Because maybe you don't have a whole bunch of teapots. That's mm. fine. You can pick it for Taiwanian or rock tea or maybe just for shui xian. It's kind of your choice. Mm -hmm. And it, some people feel really like it's a critical decision. It's it's just how the pot's going to season over time. It's not the end of the world. It's, it's mostly not. to the pot. The, the, the mostly is affecting the pot. Mm. And a lot of here is the difference in China. China uh, the the phenomenon about teapot is if this is uh, this teapot if it's brand new say it's five dollars for example mm. I use that well and in ten years it has its own lustrous and everything I can resell that for three hundred dollars say that's how much increase it could have mm. Mm. that uh, seasoning this is great for resale but my uh, yan cha tea the the raw white tea, one. the white one Which because now it's a yeah it's Went a from five yuan to, to one yuan zero. yeah it's a, nobody will buy it mm. so the resale because it's a use is increasing the mm. value if it's cared for if it's cared mm. for and a proper lustrous it doesn't look dull it's like how we choose jade mm. so people a lot of times I find uh, some uh, friend would think uh, Chinese love jade every jade is precious and no there's a, like cheap jade and cheap jade and great stuff. jade mm. yeah. And again, but what we're really focusing on is getting people or, or talking about how to pick a practical ways to pick a, tea, pick a teapot mm. to get you rolling and brewing mm. and enjoying getting the most out of your tea. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I was just going through para and that para by para still. I didn't quite finish. Uh, good. These are all really pretty clear because they're so short, right? Easy to put tea in. But that, again, like you said, it's coming back to the basics of what makes a teapot usable. Um, temperature stability, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have the water in and the temperature is not crashing really mm -hmm. fast. Um, and you want to have it be able to hold enough water to get up to have a good infusion. Mm -hmm. um, did I read usage? No. no, I didn't. So let's go out to comments. Um, okay. There's lots of comments. We'll do, uh, we'll do the la uh, second to last comment and then we'll refinish up the usage and finish up with more comments. Um, where were we? I don't know, I haven't checked in a while. Amazon? I want to know something. Something tells else. me Phil yeah. knows a thing or two about insurance for our family. I know. <laughs> what did I say? Oh, oh, oh about all those accidents. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm probably as embarrassed to recommend sabotage online. Oh. Or keep it as a spare. There we go. There's a practical solution. Keep it as a spare, which is why we have so many in the in the basement. Hey, Holiday comes in with a really, I want to back up. Maybe we missed some stuff. I mean, lots of, uh... oh no, we're good. We're good. Right. We're solid in the comments. Okay. Awesome. And then, um, yes, Hey, Holiday. That's a smart recommendation. Keep it as a spare. Really brilliant. Um, and, uh, no, I don't know anything about insurance fraud and, and we showed the cattle collection. Yay. So that was good. Josh wanted to see that. I want a borosilicate glass side handle kettle for boiling finished Shushan white tea, but I don't know where to find one. Mm, I think I vaguely know what you're talking about, but unfortunately I also don't know where to find one. Borosilicate glass side handle. So this glass ke glass kettle with the handle on the side, I think those were the really thick ones with the flattish lid and the pretty ceiling top lid. Um, I think I know what he's talking about and I, I, I haven't seen those in ages. Uh, we used to put those on the stove top with a little piece of metal wire to keep them from, like they were a temperature thing, but you don't want them straight on the burner. You just give them a little space to prevent them from cracking. Um, yeah, cool. Amazon had one, but 
but said shipping six months. What? Lame and not sure if I trust that. Yeah, yeah, smart. I don't trust six months shipping. Brandon looks quite pretty. Actually, looks lots of character. I think that's when we showed Show the uh, right. this this guy who does have tons of character. <laughs> Good kettle. <laughs> Uh, Josh says, yeah, such a lovely clay kettle. I wonder if I could get one of those and use it with my portable burner until I manage mm -hmm. to get a charcoal furnace. Mm. I think ours came with the charcoal, quote-unquote, furnace, right? Uh -huh. yes, this, furnace. The, this chimney. Oh, yeah, yes. The, it's like a the set. Chimney. So, um, I, yeah, I call it a chimney instead of a furnace, but yeah, it's basically right. either. And then Josh says, oh, God, I'm so avaricious, greedy. No money, but I want every teapot, every clay, every shape. Yes, it's they're very addictive. I, I right. warned you. I warned you. They're so addictive. You gotta watch <laughs> out. Watch out for teapots, okay? They're they're a, a blessing and a curse. Every method, everything. Someone help. Yes, you need a tea therapy group. You might start one of those. And then Josh says, speaking of, I just finally got my cutest. <laughs> You it's guys see the difference. He was more like the victim because I'm going crazy in teapots region. And I, I found that when women wants to buy things, it says, I want to buy things and I feel guilty if I have more teapots. So I get him some gifts. You know, I started by people gifts. I just want them to buy those. I don't even care if I use it mm. or somebody else use it. That's how <laughs> I got my first teapot, but I do love it. And then Josh says, where? Uh, God, I'm, I know. Speaking of, I just finally got my cutest, extremely tiny, but beautiful Chaozhou cha, cha clay pot mm -hmm. that I bought so many, many months ago when I had some money finally delivered from China yesterday. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm glad cool. you got that. That's great. All Show us a picture or something. And what is a Chaozhou? Is that porcelain? Uh, no, it's a clay. If oh, you don't look, clay, yeah, it's a look gotcha. quite similar, but they're, they have their local mm. clays. What a, right. It's a dancer okay uh, so we'd love to see that um probably um i don't know if you've already thrown some pics on insta but we'd love to see it mm. share 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 all my other pots are yeasting i think this section is very correct my duani pot smooth smooths the flavor of tea way more intensely than other clays i have in my other pots and cindy says not sure how far to take the girlfriend boyfriend metaphor <laughs> i had several different pots for different teas but only one husband mmm very good point okay I didn't think of that aspect and that's not what I meant um, but I just meant uh, you gotta watch okay. out I'm backing up I'm backing out of that you got a great point Cindy uh, yes duly noted I will uh, I will um, upgrade my metaphor for future videos and Josh says yeah exactly the side handle one with the lid that can go on the, with the lid that can go on the stove but also good for boiling Chinese medicine. Mm, mm, oh. Value Village, dude. I have a feeling that's the spot where you'll find those. Um, mm. I've got a neighbor who's there all the time. And that it just seems like the right thing for that vibe. Um, and then, LOL, Jen, you like buying gifts. I'll send you my, <laughs> I'll send you my address. <laughs> good one. Good one. No, 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 no. I'm getting the gifts. Uh, no, no intrusion. All right. Good one, guys. Let's get back to the... Uh, Back to the usage of teapot. Okay, key aspect, usage. Let me get my schedule lined up. We're gonna stay in the picture here, but I'll make sure I show you the text. Usage, the standard posture to hold a pot. Maybe you could demo mm. while I read, that'd be mm -hmm. cute. Um, you're just little, so you might have to get a little closer. See how little we are in the picture? Yes. The standard posture to hold a pot, squeezing the handle with thumb and middle finger. Forefinger gently press the lid. Remember not to press the air hole. Seize the handle with ring finger without four using of little finger. What's a forefinger? Index what's a forefinger? Yes. Forefinger is index finger. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, okay. Like I'm gonna carry on while you mm -hmm. uh, interpret. Holding the pot no, you gotta do the one handed grip now. They cannot see that's too far. You gotta zoom in. There okay. we go. Nice. Holding the pot with two hands for a so here's the two-handed grip, which I found super. Oh, this common. is a four-finger. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I call that index. Finger. Yeah, everybody does too. Oh, That's the okay. more common. So the gist is, oh, just to let you finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Holding the pot with two hands for a green hand. Oh, I love that. This method can be adopted, namely seizing the button of the pot with one middle finger while the other hand holds the handle with thumb, forefinger, and middle finger, working together by both hands. Two. 
No matter which method, we must pay attention not to press the air hole, which is at the top of the button. All right. So anything here? One, okay, maybe demo. So I kind of wanted to do it live. So this is the how I Let me hold. come onto the big screen so they can see better for the hold. Now you don't right. have to be so close. In general, it's like uh, this is for the air hole. We'll get to that part later. Yeah. And uh, uh, thumb over here and the middle finger. You, I don't get to my middle finger all the way through, just uh, to hold. Mm, and use here. the rest of the finger for stabilization. Yep. And you pull that, okay? And you can use the other hand if it's too heavy. Sometimes you have huge teapot, so it's quite heavy. Mm -hmm. And this is the air hole. Whoops, stop. <laughs> Which is not, is not for stopping. It's just right. And then if you're really fancy, you can balance it like that. No, <laughs> don't do that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You might if have you a, a tragic... Green hand. If you're what a green is hand? a green hand? It means newbie, I guess. It's but it's real, a, I think. Yeah, like we have a... Okay. It's not wrong. It's just kind right, of in right. disuse. Green horn is another like Western country, Western right, right. sort of thing. Okay. But it's just... Uh, we understand that it means newbie. So yeah, let's go through here. Right. Um, so we did the demo. Um, but the pair of one was okay, actually, under usage, no issues. Mm -hmm. And then the two hand of one. Um, I, I use two hands a lot when it's a big teapot. Right. Because I, I cannot hold it like that. The, I steady. don't know. Their way was just, uh, how did they say? This middle finger on the button, I just grab the button with my thumb and forefinger <laughs> if I'm going to do two hands. But I rarely do it. Usually it's I'm a, using a little bit more elegant. Mm, yes. Right? If you Not hold my it strong suit. Or like that. Mm. Again, right. I find it harder to don't, not don't, press don't. the air hole though when yeah. you two hand it. Mm. Then, uh, you know, honestly, with the teapot, the safety first. Don't burn yourself. Mm. Don't break the teapot right. or any other accessory. Uh, in terms of exactly how to hold it, if you are into like a tea performance and stuff, you 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 want right. to watch how you move, or which hand and stuff like mm -hmm. that. For us, it's more practical. Yeah, that's putting the kung fu in kung fu. <laughs> yeah. Right? right? No, no, seriously, that's sort of the mastery level, mm -hmm. which is totally cool. It's um, not something I focus on. I'm mm -hmm. more on the flavor and the infusion mm -hmm. and stuff, but uh, there is that element of gong fu brewing, which that's is pretty cool. cool. We've been watching a lot of gong fu movies. I'm so addicted to gong fu right now. Um, but that's not what this is about. And then the number two is just don't cover the air hole because the mm -hmm. tea won't come out. Yes. Um, not a big deal. Yeah. Let's go over the parts. Good part teapot. If you block the air hole, the the water stops. If the seal isn't good, it drips. Mm. Right. So yeah. So it is a good tell yeah. in that regard. Yes. And I like this picture. Uh, oh, I got to show you guys the picture. So we'll go to the picture of the teapot. Right. Um, I think we're blocking some. Not a critical information. Now we're out of the way. <laughs> I wave goodbye as we disappear. <laughs> so there we go. This is just a kind of a handy guide I found. Mm -hmm. um, one, you can see the recommended. This one really illustrates that height of the spout and the opening. Mm -hmm. Again, like we saw on our physical pot here. Mm -hmm. And you've got all the stuff enumerated. And I found these translations were pretty great too. Handle, right. entering of handle. Right. Um, I'm not sure about subhandle, but works good uh, enough. It's the connection. Yeah, just to, right. where it joins the mouth, uh, buttonhole, right. button. I like button. It's a really cute translation. It might be called lid handle, but I lid think handle. I prefer yeah. button. Yeah. It's yeah. cuter. Yeah. Um, spout yeah. streaming is a bit off. This is actually the spout, spout opening. Spout, right? Well, the whole thing is the it's spout. The this is okay. the spout opening. Okay. I would say, but the yeah. the. Here in on spout, uh, the Chinese is called uh, transition. It's more like trans the connecting point, almost like the oh, sub handle. Oh, this one here. Yeah, those areas are those areas are connecting points, right? Right, right. So that's what it. Is. So all these Chinese, uh, char not character. Those names, a lot of them are special, like the uh, terms because it's a whole industry it has its tea own terms right yeah or, or tea kettle pot teapot terms, terms to be more teapot terms. wow yeah. okay that's pretty cool so that they uh this one was a question i had too ampulla of value i don't know where i know i wrote that down yeah i put picture notes here too ampulla of vape sorry it says ampulla of vape so i'm super curious what that says in chinese the curve it's a, the curve of the body is like the this. curvature you know, of the this, spout. Yes. 
Oh. And think, how do you design that? And you, pattern? and that's probably a teapot term that, yes. to describe that, because yeah. some of them are pretty straight, yeah. some of them just pop up. Okay, very cool. And I, yes, those things are uh, not very important to people who just get into teapot, and you know, you know the special term or not. It's not very. Uh, important but for those who are really into teapot as a collector uh, or stuff like a r real collector to uh, look into the artism the craftsman craftsmanship of a teapot those are what you're gonna talk about a lot mm. because even though you say uh, say qi shi, the, the little round teapot shape or fang gu, those classic <laughs> teapot shape you if you see 10 of the different uh, pictures of them they're not identical right the shape of the the button the button the spra uh, the spout the shape or this liu jing shape like the this curvature. Uh, curve and where the handle how how curvy everything is different so that's why right. even though it's a classic shape but there is a still better making sure lower making those are like uh, a more advanced level is almost uh, looking at painting. Why are somebody right. a, a moving real, into collector level? That's collector right. details. Why are like. artists? Why are just a painter? So there's right. a difference right. in nuance. Uh, you know, it's a right on. Mm. I think I'm gonna pop out to the comments then. Okay. Let's see if there's any comments here. All right. So, um, easing. Not sure how far to take. But oh yeah, yeah. Cindy's comment. Like buying gifts. Okay, send the address. Oh, he sent some pics already via DM on Insta. So mm. tiny, I bet. Um, but I bet I'll make very strong Ben Song. Although allegedly Chao Zhou Clay is much more flavor neutral, non smoothing than Yi Xing Zisha. Okay, you'll yeah. see. And Brandon says, so dramatic. Yes, seize the handle with the ring finger. It sounds like grab it. <laughs> right? So it is pretty dramatic wording. Right, right. And um, and then he says, pouring is actually such an art. I'm still not very good at it. Mm -hmm. Well, just keep brewing tea. You'll get great at it. Yeah. 10,000 hours, right? And uh, Josh says, oh, drat, now I really want some tea. Better move over to the tray table, perhaps some <laughs> dancing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we why not? We forgot yeah. to ask people what they were drinking, yeah, but we yeah. usually, you're supposed to be drinking tea when we watch. I can't believe you weren't. <gasps> <laughs> it's okay at least you're catching up now and Brandon says but I suppose the entire process of Gong Fu is an art yes mm. 100% 100% yes. and it, we, it can go both ways right, right it can yeah. be practical when you go mm. to those uh, like especially in Chaoshan area every shop they have their thing they have their metal tray they have the most uh, accessible tea set but they are drinking tea Gong Fu style it's just their way that's yes. the kind of a quote unquote uh, you mean in the sense that it's gong fu but it's ultra practical ultra we, practical we went to an, ultra daily uh, we went to a pharmacy the shopkeeper set up at the front door yeah check out the, the Chenzhou video he mm, was super mm. surprised about oh, that I just, no I love that and he's there he's got his little tea tray and his gong fu set up mm -hmm. and it's not uh, it's very practical which we I think we advocate that because we want to get people into it I don't want to scare people away with all the, I love yeah, the gorgeous Gong Fu always, ceremony, but I really want people to feel like, hey, I can do that. It's really easy. Yeah, it is really easy. Yeah, it's not a big deal. And I you'll get so much more love. from the tea. Mm. Absolutely. Because mm. a lot of times, uh, I remember when we started, uh, uh, many people are doing Chinese tea in the approach of uh, performance arts and mm. stuff, but mm. I just feel like that still has distance. Like, I love mm. watching shows, but doesn't mean I'm doing that every day. Mm -hmm. But you really just enjoy the flavor, like to drink it or eat it, you can make that at home. Yeah, kind of super thing. easy and super accessible. Yeah. That's kind of the but, vibe I love. Right. With no disrespect to the mastery of yes. the various subcultures. And you can really state. go right. uh, the art level with almost every nuance. Mm. And you actually can find tons of books and uh, tons of articles. Mm. And uh, even since ancient times, people were talking about this nuance. So you really have a lot of space. I was explore. remembering the Sichuan super long spout pole. Oh right, right, right. Remember that's I think that's not the Chengdu video. That's a different. No, no, that's a Chengdu. Chengdu, Chengdu video. Vlog. Check out that vlog for the super long. There's a whole another approach to Gong Fu tea that's very. That's a little art. like a. 
kung fu tea. That is literally right. kung fu tea. Like these guys were like ninjas with tea. You even tried it. I remember? tried it. Yeah, that's why they should check it out to see how awkward I was. The master gave me a lesson. It was super cool. I was super humbled by that. So final check of the comments here. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these links of the videos we're talking about, I'll throw them down in the description below, mm -hmm. as well as the translation, but we'll just get on with the comments here. Um, pouring is such an art. Paro says, oh, Drat. Oh, yeah, yeah, want to have some tea? Should have been having tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a couple more. Josh says, yeah, for me, the classic shapes are almost like uh, genres. Many rock songs are different, but they're all rock. Many uh, shaping teapots have those features, but in their own way and distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Josh says, I know it was just because I hit my caffeine limit already, but now I can't help myself. Mm. Should be okay. Go with a really nice tea, okay? Caffeine is, uh, tends to be a bit lower in a really high quality tea. Okay, That's my tip just for you, Josh. Okay? And I think that's it. Guys, um, thank you for the uh, kudos, Josh. I saw that he just said fantastic video. You did a great job. Thank you thank for you. that. It really means a lot to us because mm -hmm. we try hard to make these packed with great information for you guys and a little bit fun uh, super interesting but mostly super useful yes um uh, that again i guess uh i don't want to mess up the outro can i do the outro don't forget to subscribe <laughs> if you like the content please give us a thumbs up it really helps out our channel it helps us bring you uh, more great content uh while you sip tea and learn about it and just enjoy it and get the most out of it uh, we love doing this with you guys. It is so it's fun. So fun. I'm really glad. There's one really great thing about the whole cor coronavirus thing was that we discovered mm. live, and it's super fun. Yes. And we're having a blast with it. I'm glad you guys are liking it too. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Click on notify. And uh, oh, he meant the tea pouring video. Okay, he didn't mean this one. So we didn't do such a good job. We got to cancel <laughs> that. Um, okay. Well, uh, hope you liked it. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm he just was kidding. a little bit bummed. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm totally teasing Josh because it's really fun to do that. <laughs> anyway, um, I think until next time, can I say that? Yeah. I think I did all the necessary YouTube cliche. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for all the great comments and questions. And until next time, <laughs> keep, keep steeping. steeping. Oh my God, I'm friendly.